At least for episode one of Yu-Gi-Oh! Confessions. Gotta have the full garb. At least for the first episode. You know, just gotta make it official. I asked my Discord server to confess to me their darkest Yu-Gi-Oh! sins and secrets, and that's exactly what we're about to go over. No judgment, just me wondering why the fuck, which is exactly... That is exactly the message I pinned on top of my uh, general chat here, the confessions general chat on my Discord server. So, if you want to be in the next episode of this series, Yu-Gi-Oh! Confessions, then go to my Discord server. The link is down in the description of every single one of my videos. Go to the confessions channel. I have not seen these con these confessions. I've actually hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna click on the confessions channel right now. Oh, I gotta go to the top. <laughs> I gotta go to the top. All right. So the start at the top here. Fortnite says I bought an ulti Hulk and an ulti Dark Requiem off a of scrub player in my town for twenty five dollars each. All right. Let's look at the prices of those cards. I don't keep up with card prices. I'm not uh, I'm not John Moore. I'm not what's good YouTube. No, I don't do that crap. So uh, let's look up. Uh, let's see. Ulti uh, Dark Requiem and ulti Dark Requiem Dragon goes for on TCG Player about. Twenty-four, twenty-five dollars. Where's the sin here? It's gotta be. It's gotta be with the needle fiber. It's gotta be with the needle fiber. Let's see. And it's loading. OT needle fiber. Sixty-five bucks. Oof. Oof. Yeah, that's a. It's a little bit of a sin. Just a little bit. I mean, it could be worse. You could have like taken it from like a little kid. You know, that, like just gave him five bucks for it. Like, oh, you don't need that card. You know, it's worth that much. Here, I'll take that off your hands. You know, it could, it could be worse. Bless me, Yuki Jesus. Right, sin. I'm planning to buy at least five hundred killer needles to prank you with. P.S. I finished the drawing, but I think it would look better digital, so I'm going to trace over it with, with GIMP or something. That's fine. That's cool. That's how, that second part sounds awesome. I, I love getting fan art and stuff. That, but the first part there... Why? My admin, Rin, says Asian Eyes is what got me into Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Man! Woo! Yeah, that's, uh, that's rough, buddy. That's, that's rough, buddy. Uh, Asian Eyes White Dragon was uh, in his heyday. Uh, he was a tuber before I was around, even. And, uh, yeah, he was, uh, kind of a, he's known to be like a troll, you know, he's known to be a troll, not really, a, the nicest guy, but it was all in good fun at the same time. I, I don't know him personally, let's just move on, I don't, I don't really know her and I don't really care that much. I think pendulums are the most quintessentially Yu-Gi-Oh summoning mechanic. Okay, okay, trip, okay, trip. <laughs> no, um, so, uh... I've heard the same argument about uh, heard about uh, artifacts before in my Yu-Gi-Oh career. I don't know, man. I think the most quintessential Yu-Gi-Oh thing is probably Yu-Gi himself. <laughs> I don't know, but a uh, blue eyes white dragon, dark magician. Like, but as far as like a summoning mechanic, man. Uh, ritual summon? What about ritual summon? Do other games do that? I can't think of a, a ritual summon in Pokemon. Or I don't play magic. I don't know, man. Like, I, I can't disagree with you there, but I'm just, just don't say it no more. <laughs> Forgive me, Yu-Gi-Oh! Jesus, for I have sinned. I cheated on Yu-Gi-Oh! for this canoe girl named Magic. Sadly, Speed Duels walked in on us when I was tapping it and he snitched on me. That's why there hasn't been any Spiegel decks lately. What? <laughs> now that's a confession right there. Like, that is... That, that's 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 some uh, more crazy. That's the more of the crazy shit I wanted to hear. Let's let's keep trucking here. Forgive me, Yuki Jesus, for I have sinned. I had summoned Larvae Moth and not won a duel. That's not even possible. If you summon Larvae Moth and your opponent didn't quit out of sheer incredulity, then they're cheating. Larvae Moth is low key the most powerful card in the game for that reason. I, I don't think you sinned, I just think you got gypped, son. <laughs> I picked up Yu-Gi-Oh! in a loony bin. <laughs> well, that's true, that's very, very interesting. <laughs> I mean, you, you, would have to, you would have to be crazy to play this game. It's a perpetual waste of money over the course of years. Anyways, I wasted a lot of time buying Ignition Assault Packs just to play Ignisters. No, it was not worth it! <laughs> Jesus, for I have sinned. I never dick slapped the like button. I just used my finger. 
Okay, how dare you? Before I found anyone else who liked Yu-Gi-Oh, I played against myself for three years straight by setting up two decks and playing both sides of the duel. Dang! That is rough, buddy, but no, that's that's what I did when I was a kid. Actually, fun fact, so here's a Yu-Gi-Oh confession from me. I wasn't allowed to play Yu-Gi-Oh when I was a kid. My mom went through like a crazy religious phase. Anyways, uh, <laughs> but uh, she the, she thought that the cards were evil and stuff like that, so I had to sneak in, you know, and, and I played cards by myself in my room and watched Saturday morning, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh cartoons, you know? Uh, and uh, just played by myself, and I would play with my friends in the in the school hallways, you know, before class and stuff. And that was the extent of the, of uh, my Yu-Gi-Oh career, you know, from the youngest days in middle school. You know, that was that was it. So uh, yeah, that's that's how I started too. So that, that's just something that happens sometimes, man. Uh, or like Raphael, you're like Raphael from the show, dude. You're like Raphael from the show. Like you know, he got stranded on the island and just played his cards the whole time, you know. And uh, he was in love with his deck. That was a you know, Raphael was a really cool character. That's. One of the best duels from the animes, Yugi, you know, Raphael. Whew, so good. I told my opponent that my face down card was Mirror Force while I was losing. They fell for it. It was a hero lives. And I combo the rest to death afterwards. Oh, man. Woo. Yeah, that's why you should never listen to your opponent. Like, just show me the Mirror Force. Show it to me. You know, like, yeah. Man, that's rough. I also once played a 39 card Dragon League deck for two months because I dropped an absolute Oh my god, under my desk and didn't realize, nor did it. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Just, that's fine, dude. You were you're playing an upstart goblin in there. <laughs> you are playing 39 with an upstart. It's good, it's good, it's good. <laughs> my friends and I borrow cards for events and have the same color sleeves. Father Nono, I sinned by top decking a fourth MST. I didn't know I had it. <laughs> Until side decking, I realized I had 41 cards. I didn't tell him. I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> that, that stuff happens, man. Like, uh, if you've ever been playing, uh, you know, uh, playing with your friends and stuff, and having the same color sleeves, and then uh, you know, you you go, you each go back home after playing, you know, and then you're looking through your deck later, and you have their card in your deck because. You know, you can monster aboard something from their graveyard, you know, and then accidentally put it in your graveyard out of habit. That stuff happens, you know, that stuff happens. Uh, yeah, that's that's rough. But uh, yeah, if you uh, mention it in a tournament, like, uh, well, I'm playing too many cards, you get a game lost. Like, so yeah, just don't say anything. Just, if you're, if it's really accidental, just don't say anything and fix it after, you know? I mean, you could just decide to be super honest, but it, it just depends on, on, I don't know. Yeah. The, the, the Jesus thing to do, the Yugi Jesus thing to do would be to be honest with your opponent and hope they're cool. Like, look, I just realized this. That would be, that would probably be the correct course of action. But let's keep trucking here. One time I borrowed a friend's card for a deck and was about to use it for Black Wings, but traded it by accident. Oh, oh man. Yeah, trading cards that are ears. Dude, that's, that's rough. That's fucking rough. <laughs> uh, that might be the theme. Read your opponent's cards and make them ch and, uh, check your deck for your friend's cards. <laughs> oh, that's like the theme so far. I have also sinned against the young ones of this game. Oh no, oh no. I flipped macro against a 10 year old and watched him banish two starter decks worth of zombies and random dragons after activating grass. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, this, uh, that grass is greener, that card, guys. It, like you, would, uh, people would play it in 60 card decks and mill their whole decks and like gain a lot of advantage, just tons and tons of advantage. But if you have the uh, Macrocosmos or Dimensional Fisher up or a Dark Wall up, everything gets uh, everything gets um, banished. In a friendly tournament in my group of Yu-Gi-Oh players, I knew I was going against a guy who was obsessed with card rarity, like card quality, like like rarity is what he's saying. So I specifically brought all lowest rarities <laughs> and removed my sleep. <laughs> straight Eugene on him just to throw him off his game and beat him. It didn't work. <laughs> that's rough. That's rough. Yeah, uh, uh, trying to reverse intimidate your opponent. That's actually a strategy that people had back in the day. Instead of having like a real mat, people would uh, uh, bring like, um, I don't know, a freaking kitchen towel <laughs> or like a, a beach towel and like play on that. Yeah, that's something that people would do to try to throw off their opponent. Um, mind, mind, you know, psych out their opponent, play mind games with their opponent. Like, oh, this guy's really bad. 
but then you actually know what you're doing. You're just playing on a beach towel <laughs> for no reason just to be a troll. Forgive me, no, no, for I am a Dragon Link player. That's a sin <laughs> in and of itself. No, not really. It's the, it's a cool deck, you know? I was an attorney once where I was in the last game of the match. My opponent was playing Altergeist. Time was called and my opponent activated a trap. I, sm I smart as I am, I chained red reboot on it and lost the match. Oh man, that's not good. I enjoyed playing empty jar and mill and goat format, and I enjoyed the salt from my opponents. Oh man, I enjoy playing jar and mill and goat format. As annoying as those decks are, you know, they're not unbeatable because Nox a thing, Mystic Swordsman's a thing, Blade Knight's a thing, etc., etc., etc. You know, when it comes to the flip decks, you know, empty jar decks, but um. Uh, Burn. Burn and Goat is low-key very, very powerful because they have stuff like Nightmare Wheel, uh, three skill drain at their disposal, all kinds of stuff. Uh, burn is very, very good. Um, and the best side deck card for Burn and Goat format is Desert. Dead one bat. Yeah, Dead one bat. That's the best one besides Royal Decree. And uh, no judgment. I mean, someone's got to someone's got to play those decks. You know, someone's got to play it. You know, to give the decks, um, give any valid deck for any format representation. You know, forgive me for I have sinned greatly <laughs> in an online duel. I used Eldlick Dogmatica Dragoon against my friend Shiranui's. And for an even greater sin, <laughs> like, like so, <laughs> that's your sin. It's like you just like Ralph will stop your friend by playing a way better deck. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And for an even greater sin, I once, and only once, called Cyber Dragons. Not a very good deck. I'm sorry, I was blind. I said no judgment, man, but after the whole not dick slapping like button thing, after denying Cyber Dragons, y'all are testing my patience. <laughs> Yuki Jesus, forgive me for I run Dragon Link and say it's interactive gameplay. <laughs> oh, I mean, like trying to call a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh matches these days interactive uh, gameplay is a fucking joke. <laughs> but moving on. Perhaps my greatest sin is, is the time I zombie rival rivalry locked a guy for 14 turns in a cowboy for game. <laughs> That is nasty! That is nasty! And, and uh, with the Gozuki as a material, detaching it as a cost, and using its effect to banish a unit zombie and summon a <laughs> battle rock from hand. That's funny. Forgive me, I know you're. <laughs> And I viewed an 11 year old who was playing a cyber deck twice in a duel. <laughs> So I pictured some poor kid with like a cyber with like cyber starter decks getting nightmare twice in one duel. <laughs> oh, that's rough. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, go do some. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. No judgment still, but yeah, go do some hail marys after that. <laughs> I don't know, man. That's rough. That's rough. <laughs> Forgive me, Yugi. No, no. I have sinned. I mixed Numeron with Gimmick Puppet, and the worst part was it was good, especially before Zexel was banned. That and the fact that Network can send a, r a, r a rum Numeron Force and mass negate everything. Here's Kevin. Forgive me, Yugi Jesus. I play Fur Hires and I like it and Mystic Mind. I know you do, Kevin. I know you do. Oh, uh, actually, this would be this would be uh, Billy Brake's Yu-Gi-Oh confession. You know, if uh, Billy Brake was on this show right now. Um, uh, Kevin beats Billy Brake in a in a friendly match, mind you, in a fun match uh, with Fur Hires. At the last duty, yes, that happened. Billy might have let him win, but <laughs> just kidding. I don't know. I wasn't there, but I do know that uh, Kevin won with fur hires, and he does play Mystic Mine, and uh, I definitely have to side deck for it because Kevin plays Mystic Mine around here, and he's also like the only player around here <laughs> besides me. Anyways. I didn't properly store my cards until recently. I put them in a polyester bag and leave them in the basement. Oh yeah, we're the, that's the last sin in the in the in the confessions chat. That's the last one. That's a perfect one to end on. That is some Eugene shit there, son. Woo, that is some Eugene shit. Ugh. You're you're all forgiven. Okay? You're all forgiven. I want some juicier sins for the next episode. Some of those are pretty good. That last one was really, really, really good. Some of those were hilarious, man. Like, this is a nightmare. 11-year-old, dude. 
uh, like the, every instance of like you know uh, too many cards, too few cards in the deck. Yeah, that that crap has happened to me before. Like that's just so relatable. It is kind of a Yu-Gi-Oh sim, but this is an innocent one. You know, it's a really innocent one. I just want to thank all of you for all of your responses. This was a really fun first episode. I want to see some even crazier sims for the next one. I'll probably start doing these every week. This was this was a way fun for the first episode. I didn't even finish my coffee. I didn't need to. It wasn't that stressful. You guys need to. I mean, one of these one of these days now, now that I've said something, you're gonna send me some crazy stuff and this coffee's gonna get finished because I'm gonna need it. <laughs> I'm gonna need it, like, to deal with it. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna put on the full garb every episode, but I figured at least for the first episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Confessions, I could, you know, don the garb, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and forgive Yu-Gi-Oh! Sims and whatnot, I, you know, at least for the first one. Man, I'll tell you what, this robe is hot. It's hot in here with these lights. Uh, there's some of those sins were pretty hot. <laughs> That's gonna be the end of the video. Um, I can't wait to see uh, what sins you uh, you give to me to review next. Um, I'm I'm really excited. Make sure to actually dick slap the like button. I can't show you. I cannot demonstrate that it's inappropriate. But you dick slap the like button and then subscribe. That is how it's done. Your sins are forgiven. Subscribe! <laughs>